Good morning, the internet. I am Robert Sutherland Chapman. Today, I'm going to show you my new room and enjoy some casual banter. Now, although on Instagram it is undeniable that the king of coffee is Daniel Davies, I think I've come up with something new based upon a recipe I found in Hangzhou, China when I was there with my father, narrowly dodging. Let me show you what I found. So because it's so hot in China, it was 38 degrees when we were there, um, we started putting a little bit of, you can't see this, but this is salt. On the coffee. Coffee there. <laughs> yeah. I've just set you to mega wide. My friend Max Taylor Grant, one of the most amazing photographers and definitely the best uh, tour manager ever to tour manage me, has uh, spent a day with me helping me to turn my room into some semblance of order. And I'm incredibly proud of what was achieved and I figured it was worth sharing it with you guys. So I've also got so much new gear, so many things to tell you. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing over the next four or five days is shooting loads of videos and giving you all the goss, all the information, all the banter. I should be swept off to Bantanamo Bay. But before I do, let me give you a dramatic beard silhouette. Let's start with the entrance to the room where for example, I now have a rug. And the, the main objective of this was to sort of really bring the room together, but also it absolutely helps to destroy uh, reverberations and room sound. Um, I've also found out, according to my friend Max, that my buddy Beer has a load of acoustic foam that he no longer requires. Excess foam. I think I can help him with that. I have a toy shelf <laughs> for just all the sort of stupid stuff that I either get given or I acquire. Uh, some of it is not so stupid though, obviously. This is a, a massively condensed version of, of what I have um, in my collection. But these are things that I'm either going to be demonstrating or showing off or using for some particular reason. Just got sent this by the lovely guys at Boss and Roland. Um, you've seen me play this before. It's the Katana Air. It's a wireless guitar amp. It's really, really, really great. And um, I recommend you check one out at some point. Um, I actually have my Katana head back there too. Uh, so in this case, is my son's PRS. I always leave it in my room just in case I want to have a play. To the amplifier section. I listened to many of the comments and I think it's fair to say I am ubiquitous. I'm I'm everywhere on YouTube. If you search for a brand or if you, you know, guitar brand or if you search for I'm everywhere. It even annoys me. <laughs> you know, I can't look for a demonstration of a, of a Gibson without seeing me saying the G word that makes me feel slightly nauseous uh, occasionally when I get oversaturated with my own presence. So I don't blame you for occasionally being slightly bored of of me or chatting guitars or, or Victor, anything I'm in anything I'm involved with. I get that. So you know what I've done. I've partially ignored it, and also uh, I have just changed up a lot of the gear here for me, because I get a bit bored sometimes. So I've got a couple of nice new amplifiers, and I made a decision actually to start collecting um, batik amplifiers, and maybe even some vintage guitars, just to mix things up a little bit, because I can, and I think, you know what, why not? So I'll show you some of these amps. Now the first one is a victory, but I think you'll forgive me. It's the V30 Mark II. And what I really like about this amplifier is that it is a modded version of the, of the V30, 
But the clean channel, I don't know why they call it clean. Well, I know why they call it clean, it's a clean channel. But you can pull it uh, and it has as much gain as you would ever require. But it's a beautiful British crunchy gain. It's like a mouthful of Cocoa Pops and Frosties together when you're an adventurous child. And it's got a really cool thing it does with the base end on the mod, you can take the mod off on the back, you probably know this, and then the overdrive section is filth. It's just filth. And what it is, is if you take one of these uh, and you put it through that, you get the tone. You'll know what I'm talking about if you know. Um, orange. It's been a while since I played Orange and quite frankly I miss them. So in my opinion these are two of the best amplifiers Orange make. The Rocker Verb 50, uh, this is the Mark II, and the OR100, which is just a ridiculous animal. Particularly good if you push it quite loud, and I kind of can because I'm in a detached house. <sighs> Moving along, Bad Cat. I met Bad Cat at the NAMM show uh, last year. Actually, I guess it was this year, isn't it? Because it was January. And I played the Cub 40R. I played the combo and I was so impressed and I said to the guys I really I'd love one of these in my life um, it would it would do all sorts of things that one doesn't normally have the chance to do and what I really like about the Cub 40 is it's got a bunch of different valves you can choose between so you can have EF86 or 12AX7s it's got a fat mode um, they call this K Master. Really, this is this is your sort of your preamp, and then this is your, your master volume. It's just it sings. It's got a singing, ringing quality to it. Reminiscent of a matchless, reminiscent of, um, in some ways, some of the old boogies, but also if you've ever tried to fend a twin and you've really cranked it and it does a thing that that can do as well. So this is a really unique amplifier, Bad Cat. I'm honoured to own one and very, very appreciative of the company for giving me this opportunity to use one. The reverb is brilliant. Um, it is in the preamp section though, so if you push a pedal through the front, the reverb gets bigger, which can be overcome by just turning it off and as an effects loop. Moving along <laughs> to the blue corner, where uh, I had a problem where I couldn't help myself. I saw this at Anderton's, and it's a custom 1x12 and a Mark 525. The first proper amplifier I owned was a Studio 0.25 from Boogie, and this is really what happened to that design. It's just such a great sounding amp. I mean, it's just superior to many other amps. It really is. Um, disregarding the EQ section, which is obviously fantastic. The clean section takes you through crunch, kind of almost a high gain vibe. Um, and then if you really want to gun it, there's the extreme setting. It's two channels, it's everything you'd ever need. It's got a really nice, um, pure, clear, harmonic quality to the gain that I, I very much enjoy. Currently running it through the 412, but it sounds equally sick through this little tiny 112. Which, and I love the fact that it's blue, and I love the fact that it goes with my Strat almost perfectly. And you know what? This is the ideal Sunday morning coffee jam amplifier because look, it just looks like a happy thing, doesn't it? And I've got a bunch of pedals, things that I've, you know, I take on or off my board depending on what I'm doing. Um, things that my friends gave me. Uh, I don't know what that is. And then <laughs> more pedals, <laughs> things like that. And 
Um, I've taped up, well, Max taped up the floor so I can, you can see these little tape areas, so I can add or remove um, the lighting and whatnot. And then, if I sit on the creaky chair of Creek, what we have here is my current pedal board setup for both Door J and my other band, previously known as River Thief and is now called Clockwork Wolf and Company. Rocking the Titan. Although at the moment, I also have, this is a real mess because I'm in the middle of turning up two new pedal boards and doing some paperwork. But I've also got these. These are Chapman prototypes. Um, this is the overdrive booster. And this is the distortion. Took them down and showed them to Pete and Lee. And they just were so impressed and so was Rabia. So we're gonna be doing something with these very soon. Um, I'm ashamed, ashamed of myself to say that I was given these and I've, I've had the time to plug one of them in and I haven't even tried the others. And I understand that these are absolutely fantastic treble boosters. So that's gonna have to happen in the video soon. It's just a symptom. It's just a symptom of me <laughs> balancing my life because I, a lot of people say to me, Rob, how do you manage to, to do everything that you're doing at the same time? And I, I don't honestly know. It's, it sometimes drives me to distraction. And I think the way I've managed to survive doing everything that I am doing and continually never stopping is that I make sure I am always following and doing things that I really want to do at the time. And if something crops up that I have to do that I don't want to do it, I am the guy that kind of puts things on a back burner and then regrets it and I leave things to the last minute. But what I've managed to do recently is tell myself if I can just overcome that hurdle and get it done, then everything else that I really want to do is much easier to do. So I think that's a valuable lesson to learn and it probably isn't, I don't know. Kemper, I'm loving the Kemper, always loved the Kemper, but you know what? I just, I don't know how to describe this, but I, I although it sounds just like an amp, I miss playing an amp. <laughs> it's not that it doesn't sound like an amp, and I still love it, and I still will use it but I, I just miss the smell of a valve amp and, the, and knowing it's a real amp, it's a psychological thing. So I've lent my Kemper to Max, um, who's currently writing some music with Dave. It's all a bit incestuous in our Brighton bunch. Uh, and I'm back to using valve amps again. And Dave lent me his SM7B, so it's gonna sound a bit juicy. It's actually a bit close. Uh, got knocked and I've ordered myself one. I've ordered myself one. I've also got a new vocal mic so that things will sound uh, a lot better, hopefully, mm. anyway. Thank you. 